All right, we're going to take a look at how to print the histogram. We've just finished the 1D homework assignment, the 1D array homework assignment, where you had to print this visual histogram based on a frequency count. Whenever we program, I've told you before that you should always solve the simpler problem. Being new to programming, most of the time you just want to write one program to solve the entire problem, but we're going to take a look today at how we would just break down something like this to control the printing. Right. Let's take a look right at this histogram. This was generated by a frequency count. We won't worry about how we generated these numbers. We're just going to know at some point we are going to have a group of numbers representing a count and we need to print out an asterisk for the total count. Right? We won't even worry about the groups at first. One common question that we received was, how do we control how to print how many asterisks per line? Let's take a look at this first group. The problem said we could have a maximum of 10 asterisks on a line, and this first group appears to have 15. But let's just tackle the simpler problem of, how do we control the number of asterisks we print on a line? Let's just start in writing a simple program to control that. Right. To control it, just to learn how to do it. That's the purpose of writing many simple programs. We write little pieces, we test them, we learn how to control that technique. After we learn the techniques we need for the program, we begin to put them together to build the bigger program. So we know that we could do, we know that we don't want to do this. Intuitively, we know we don't want to really say, well, Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, there's ten I could put on one line. And if my group I had 15, it's supposed to end up looking like this. I'm not even going to worry about a group label. All right. We know from the most simple aspect, if we knew exactly how many we needed to type all the time, we could do this. But we also know this isn't the solution. Right. We do that and we say, okay, we know how to print this out. I know that's not the solution. Sometimes that's what it takes for someone to get started though, is to just do this much. Right. You said the problem is we don't know how many will be in that group zero count. Right. We don't know how many of these. It won't be 15 every time. So when it says, I don't know how many I'm going to have, I'm going to have something to control then, some, some unknown number. I might even make myself a note. A variable controls the total number of asterisks to be printed. Right? The variable is the result of change of counting. So the variable is the result of counting numbers, right? Random numbers, but and the variable's value will change every time the program runs. This was the com complication, right? Knowing exactly how many we needed to print, we're okay. The complication is the fact that it's going to be based on a variable. Well, let's just stick with this one. Let's just stick with, I want to print 15. Let me assume that the variable's value will contain those 15. So I'm just going to call this value, and I'm going to set value equal to 15. Or maybe I'll just call that number of asterisks to print. That's a horribly long name, but maybe it'll help remind me what I'm trying to do. And I'm going to set that equal to 15 rather than call it value. 
This is based on a variable, right? There are different schemes you might think about, if statements to compare things and all, but what we want to do at its most basic level, what I mentioned in class, is that you want to print one asterisk at a time. And if I want to print one asterisk at a time, and I have to print more than one, right? I don't want to have to do something like this, right? I don't want to have to say, oh, well, there's one asterisk, right? Here's another way to do it, right? If I needed to print 15 of these, I can do this 15 times. Now I'm running out of my count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But then one, two, three, four, five. After 10, I need to put one on a new line. Okay. Let me get rid of that. Can we build and run this? All right, if I build and run this, right, I get the same result. What we did is we had 10 printf statements. They all printed one asterisk at a time. I knew then at the end of the 10th one, I needed a new line character so I could get the other five on a line all by themselves, right? That's one way I can do this just to visualize printing one asterisk at a time. So my purpose was to visualize printing 15 asterisks one at a time. After 10, print the others on a new line. Now, when I look at this, if I do this, right, after we do this, if you look at this, printing this one at a time, right, we don't want to write this code 15 times. We don't want to write it 100 times if we have to do 100 on a line. This is the point where we look at this and we say, anytime I find myself writing the same piece of code over and over, the same line of code or the same set of code over and over, I know that belongs in a loop. So instead of now visualizing doing this 15 at a time, what if I create a loop, right? I'm going to have my counter here, I, right? We could declare I inside the loop, but if you don't have the, your compiler working with the C99 uh, option, I'm just going to declare I outside the loop here. All right, so I'm going to declare I up there, right? In case you're not running with a standard 99 compiler option or flag. Right, I equals zero. I less than, well, I could hard it code in 15, but we started using that variable, number of asterisk to print. As long as I is less than that, since I, actually, plus plus I, right? Or here, let's start at one, and we'll make this less than or equal to. That's a little more intuitive. We're gonna start with I equals one, as long as I is less than or equal to the number of asterisks to print, we're going to go ahead and have it just print an asterisk. I don't wanna copy all of that, I'm going to copy one of these. All right. Now let's comment this out. Let's not destroy it yet. We remember what it looked like. If we run this much of our code, sorry, I forgot to return zero down here and I wasn't looking at my warnings. All right, but it was running. Not my final product. All right, so now if we run that, right, as you probably guessed, we get all 15 on a line. But at this point, we were able to control printing one asterisk at a time with a loop Right, we're using this that is our control of our total number of asterisks to print. We now need to deal with how do we get it to just print 10 on the line. Look at this. We said that after 10, I need to print the others on a new line, meaning after I've printed 10, I need a new line character. Oops. 
after 10, actually, so same comment, after 10, start printing on a new line. Well, that means I need some sort of count, but right, right. I is a count of how many times these are printing. So if I said, if I equals 10, just go ahead and give me the new line character. Let's see what that does for us. Okay, that gave us what we wanted in this case. We do a comparison, right? As soon as you say to yourself, oh, I have some special circumstance I need to detect. Well, that's going to be a selection statement, right? You want to check a condition. Here we checked a condition when that condition was true. In this case, I equals 10, right? We said, give us a new line. All right, that worked for this particular case. That got us started. I'm going to get rid of this code. This code where we're doing this several times. All right, that works for this case. That's the simplest case we got working. Now we ask ourselves, well, what happens if I have a group that has more than 15? What, let's go to a case where we have 21. If we have 21, we'd expect two lines of 10 and one line of one. So let's do a build and run. All right. That didn't quite work for us here if i equals 10. All right. When we start having a count that's more than 10, in this case more than 20, right? Two, two lines of 10, we need to alter this condition. All right. So we start testing with some other conditions. We say, hmm, well, if I have 21, right, we expected two lines of 10 and a line of one. Then I need to change this condition. And actually, let's pop this back up. Since I said I equal to one, I don't think we actually got 10 on a line. Let me run this again. I usually start at zero. Let's run this again. Did we get 10 on that first line? I think we got nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only got nine on the line. Because we started I at one. If that's the case, then I would need to make this condition 11 because when I was 11, that means I wouldn't print a 10. I prefer to start at I equals zero. Make this I equals 10. Let's go back to our case of 15, 15, and I want to make this I less than. So I'm going to start I at zero, right? For zero through nine, I'll print an asterisk. When I gets to be 10, then I'll want the new line character. Let's build and run that just to confirm that we get our 10 and our five because we actually got nine and six before. So our 10, four, six, eight, 10, there's our five. So we made the change to set i equal to zero. i now then has to be less than our total number. So zero through 14 is 15 unique times. This will, at, this test will be true. When i is equal to 10, right, we said let's do this. Now let's go to our case now of 21, right, to check this. Build and run. So here's the case where we got 10 on the first line, but we're getting 11 on the second. Right. Simply because I equal 10 works as long as we have less than 21. But as soon as we have two groups of 10, we need to change this condition. Meaning we should divide our count by 10, and whenever the remainder is zero, that means we have an even multiple of 10. So we divide the count by 10. A remainder value 
of zero means the count is an even multiple of 10. So now let's run with our 21. And yes, I forgot my ending parenthesis. So we now have two lines of 10 and a line of one. Good, that seemed to work. Well, if I make this 31, does that work? Do I get three lines of 10? Yes, it does. If I make this 105, do I get 10 lines of 10 and a line of 5? Yes, I do. I, I can test with most any number in here, right? 47, 4 lines of 10. This will be our last test. Right, but at this point, we can test this with multiple values and go, Good, good, I can now control, right? I've solved that part of the problem. I haven't integrated it into my whole solution, but I know this works, right? And now I'm hard coding this number of asterisks to print, right? I've solved that much of the problem, so after 10, start printing on a new line, I could make this a little more generic. I could create a variable that said int, uh, how many to print per line? So I'm going to say print per line. I'm going to set that equal to 10. I'm going to change this 10 to number to print per line. Print per line is my variable. I'm going to put a comment here that says, this is the number of asterisks to print on one line. All right, let's just do a little build and run here. We still have this set up for a group of 10. Our total number was 47. We still get the same result, right? We started by hard coding in some numbers. And we turned around and started making them variables. Making them variables allows us easily to change our program because what if all of a sudden we said, oh, you know what? I only want to print seven per line. All I need to do is change that right there. And now we get seven per line. All right? We can change that to anything we wanted to control then the number per line. Change it back, just test to make sure I didn't make any sort of error. There's my four lines of 10, there's my line of seven. Right? I would say this program right at this point save this program you've been able to control the number of asterisks per line the next thing we'll do in the next video is we'll take a look at how we control groups